was a normal girl, living a normal life, like you and me, with her own dreams. But her death wasn't normal. A ridiculous tradition during menstruation claimed the life of this beautiful teenager from Acham, Nepal, last year. Not only this girl, 10 other girls died in the district in the same year. When it's not discussed openly, this can lead to several myths forming around menstruation, which hampers the daily life of many menstruating girls and women in terms of physical and mental well-being. Namaste, I'm Rosa Maharzan, a public health graduate. I was 14 years old when I was on my period for the first time. Fortunately, I had been taught about menstrual health and hygiene by the time. But not every girl in our country is that lucky enough to gain the knowledge of menstrual health and hygiene. According to an article published in the Journal of Public Health Association, in a survey conducted by Lakshmi Raj Joshi in Bazan district in June 2015, out of 88 respondents who were the female of reproductive age, that is 15 to 49 years, only 5.7% of the respondents were knowledgeable about menstrual health and hygiene. Whereas, majority of 94.3% uh, were not knowledgeable at all. Today I'm here to present about Chaupadi. But before jumping onto the topic, let's talk what menstrual taboos are. Menstrual taboos are any social or religious custom prohibition practice during menstruation, which comes from the superstition of impurity during menstruation. After seeing the practice of seclusion and plight of these women, I believe that taboos around period are not just a cultural issue, it is also a human right issue. So how many of you guys here have heard this term Saupardi? Okay, that's good. If you haven't, my today's presentation will be centered on Saupardi. Saupardi, as I have already said, is one of the severe menstrual taboo still being practiced in the western part of Nepalese society. In this tradition, women are not allowed to live in their own house. They have to live in a cow shed or a makeshift heart. Girls are not allowed to go to the school during their menstruation period. Also, foods are thrown from a great distance to those menstruating girls. Now, don't you think such activities completely crosses the self-esteem of those menstruating girls? Yes, of course. Girls are restricted from consuming the nutritious foods like milk, butter, ghee, and yogurt for the fear that they will forever mar those goods. Each and every girl in this tradition faces a unique circumstances. Some girls are sexually assaulted and abducted from the hearts. Deaths occur due to suffocation and fire while trying to ward off the coal in Saupardi. This is how Saupardi is highly prone to the accidents. I would also want to share some of my personal experience. When I was in Surkhet district during my volunteering service, I heard a traditional healer beating a girl. Later, I came to know this was because a menstruating girl is seen as someone really powerful and someone to be feared of. She was beaten just because she went to the river during her period. Don't you think such activities has negative impact on the physical and me mental health of those menstruating girls? Yes. yes, of course. I still remember that day when I was in Surkhet. I was on my period, stressed and weak. An old woman came up bringing some cell roti for me. But as soon as she knew that I was on my period, she didn't hand me the food. In fact, she walked away. I felt so strange, yet humiliated, because I had never experienced that back home. Can you believe older population still don't touch those menstruating girls and women? Also, they don't consume the foods and water tossed by those menstruating girls, just because they are regarded as untouchables. 
Not only in these remote areas, even in Kathmandu, the capital city of Nepal, women often venture out at night during Rishi Panchami to bathe themselves in cow dung and urine, to wash away and atone for the sins committed during menstruation. Out of the fear that they will otherwise be reborn as a prostitute is the same in cities and villages. It's just done in two different ways. So this is how Thaupadi has negative impact on the physical and mental well-being of those menstruating girls and how it claims the life of those innocent, innocent girls. This is why Thaupadi should be regarded as a human right issue rather than just a cultural issue. If we don't raise voice and take action against such a ridiculous tradition, change will never come and women will always be mistreated. I believe change can only come to the places once you make women act on it. When women become the main facilitator of change, when they have the position and empowerment to be able to enact on it. As change is universal, I individually cannot bring change in the society. So let's put our hands together and fight against such a ridiculous tradition like Saupadi to make a society a better place to live. These are the pictures from the menstrual health and hygiene program that we conducted in Ramghat Surkhet. We educated those girls on the physiology of menstruation, menstrual cycle. We also uh, demonstrated on the preparation of homemade sanitary pads and we also discuss about menstrual myths and taboos that hampers the life of menstruating girls. So this was our little effort towards positive change. So let's put our hands together and run awareness campaigns to uproot such ridiculous tradition. At last, I'd like to specially thank Green for providing me with this authority and opportunity to be here. And also, I'd like to thank my audience for providing me with your valuable time. Thank you. Come and make a presentation at Green. Join today. Log on to green.com.np and follow us on Facebook and Instagram.